So for those two or three people that'll comment down in the comments and say, uh, you know, Kevin, you spent four minutes before you even told us whether or not you liked the record. I will say, if you're a Pink Floyd fan, if you're an Animals fan, buy this record right now. Don't wait. Just go buy it. It's that good. For everybody else that wants to hear why I think so, then stick around. Because I'm going to tell you why I think this is so good. Let's do it. So Pink Floyd, definitely one of my all-time favorite bands. Um, I've seen them live. I've listened to every record they have put out. And several of them I've listened to probably more than any other record. So I do have a pretty good opinion on um, Pink Floyd and their catalog. Animals, not my favorite, but definitely not my least favorite at all. Um, and honestly, this pressing probably moved it up a notch. I have listened to this record a lot, you know, no question. Hearing this version of it, it is very apparent very fast that this is completely different. This is obviously, it's not a remaster, not just a different pressing, this is a remix. I don't think there's a better representation than these two covers. This one sounds murky, moody, dark. This one sounds really clean, really transparent, really updated, and they both sound like they look, which is it's very cool in its own way. So uh, if you want to know how they sound, they sound like this. Okay, so let's break this down. Um, the original mix, which is really dark, really moody, the bass and the drums are what I would consider kind of a, even for the 70s, are really flat and thin. You know, there's the, the low end of this record has, there's a muddy and a murkiness to it. And that's undisputed. I think anybody that listens to music can hear that everything below the mids, you're kind of, guessing at what's happening you know it's just kind of all in this big wash and i don't think it was intentional i do think you know it wasn't the worst thing in the world considering the dark tone of the topic of this record so it, it kind of worked with it but um you know in, in one of the interviews i saw they were talking about how the, you know it was a new studio they had just built it. It was the first recordings they had done. And there was a lot of fighting in this album. And it just, um, I don't know. It's not the best, it's not the best production, you know. And I, I think a lot of 70s albums, they just tend to sound flat. Especially the drums. A lot of drummers were using concert toms back then. And those are those you know, the, the drums that don't have a bottom head on them, or they were really over dampening them. You know, they'd put pillows and everything, or they'd put felt strips across the bottom of the heads and it would just, it would end the decay of a drum. That's just kind of the way things were. People were used to it that way. Um, it wasn't until the eighties and nineties where people got away from that stuff and you can hear it. Uh, and with, with that thin bass on the original mix, I do think it was because the drums and the bass were fighting each other so much for presence that they had to make that bass thin in order to get what bass they could out of those drums. So this was a really good candidate for a remix. Besides, you know, the, the swampiness or the muddiness of the original mix, the guitars are so hot and they're so upfront. And that was another thing in the seventies. I think, you know, that was the, the, the decade of guitar rock that's when you know the, the biggest bands were really showing off guitars it was that's just the way it was distortion martial amplifiers and big guitars and this album especially when you go back and forth from the new mix to the old mix it's really apparent how forward the guitars are in this album and it ruins kind of the impact of it, in my opinion, 
in that going back and forth between the two records, I would often turn the volume down of the older version because it was just so brash in my ears that I wasn't able to give it the volume that I could with the new one and have everything really, you know, the drums and the, the percussion and the bass really impacting getting that good chest hit. Um, in order to get that chest hit with the original, uh, the guitars would be so loud that your ears would be bleeding. And I'm not, I'm not dogging on, you know, I know it sounds like I'm dogging on the original version. And I love that album. I've, I've heard that album a hundred times easily. There's no question. The original version. I'm saying this one's different. And, and in a way that I don't think I would have listened to this album another 20 times in my life had there not been a remix done of it where it's really all I've listened to for the last week, several, several times. I've at least listened to this new remix at least 20 times on several sets of speakers. I've actually sold speakers using dogs, a pair of HPM 100s, a guy bought on Saturday. This record sounds incredible. Um, I will probably start using it to showcase stereo system. It's that good. The production on it's that good. The kick drum is that good. You know, it's there. It hits you. And, and, you know, really the only negatives I thought for the new record would be that in comparison, uh, David Gilmore seems a little bit overshadowed. Uh, we're, we're talking minutely. You know, some of the solos, some of the solos aren't as, you know, center stage um, as maybe they could have been. But if you, if you want David Gilmore's guitars, uh, the, that first one, that, that's, your, that's your record. And I love David Gilmore. I think he's one of the greatest guitarists and vocalists of all time. I've always said, you know, on my deathbed, if I was given the choice between my mom singing me a lullaby or David Gilmore, I love you, mom, but I'd probably pick David Gilmore. That man's voice is more butter than Lando Lakes. Um, there's something very soothing about his voice and I love his guitar playing. So by no means do I think it's justice to put uh, David Gilmore towards the back, but this is just, um, this revitalized my appreciation for this record. And I think it's going to do the same for a lot of you guys out there. You know, my YouTubers, um, that within analytics, it shows me the age demographic, the majority of the people you guys out there watching are my age, which is almost 50, uh, all the way through 60 and male by not even by not a little bit. I mean, I'm talking 98.5% are male. And I think, I mean, it's over 60% are between 40 and 65. So you guys know this album as much as I do. And I do yourself a favor. It's the best 30 bucks I've spent, uh, in weeks. I'll, I'll buy every single one, you know, any record that could revitalize, um, an album for me like that has is worth $30 and more. It's not like the music industry is churning out legendary albums at this point, you know, it's kind of bleak. And if, if a remix for better or for worse gives me another 20 listens or 30 listens of a record that I probably won't listen to anymore because I've heard it so many times, I'll pay that 30 bucks all day long. That brings up another topic of, you know, what do you guys think of remixes? Um, I've heard a couple of things and some people think they're a cash grab. Some people complain that that's all they hear on the radio now like are the remixes because they're more radio friendly. Um, and so that bothers them. My thoughts would be, I think colored vinyl variants are more of a cash grab. Box sets are more of a cash grab. Uh, I don't, I don't listen to the radio really at all 
anyway. So that doesn't bother me, but I guess I do understand if it bothers you. However, radio compresses everything. Uh, they flatten it, and they always have since the 70s. So that's not really anything new to them. Um, my other thought is, you know, they're not coming to your house to take your records. Both are still available on all the streaming services. Um, it's just another option. It doesn't bother me a bit. I'm not a huge Beatles fan, so I, while I definitely can hear the difference um, with the Beatles remixes, the Giles Martin ones, they weren't as impactful for me because um, I, it, Beatles just don't really do that much for me. That's just my personal opinion. But this one was um, this one was huge, and it does kind of make me think. You know what other records could be remixed? Obviously, Metallica and Justice for All is probably on the top of everybody's list to be remixed. But I get both sides of that. Um, I I understand the you know that's what made it what it is. You know we all remember it that way. However, it's horrible. And um, I, I've heard that album as many times as I've heard Animals. And I'll, I won't listen to it 20 more times in my life. I just won't. Will I, if they do a remix of it? Absolutely. And would I pay $30 for it? Absolutely. So, you know, but what other albums could be done? You know, and I kind of made a, a short list, you know, and what's off limits? You know, you got to think, you know, Dark Side of the Moon is... You know, did I just speak blasphemy by even mentioning Dark Side of the Moon in a remix? You know, even if Alan Parsons did it, I don't, I don't, it, it'd be cool. I'd listen to it for sure. I'd buy it for sure. Black Sabbath Paranoid, Physical Graffiti, Appetite for Destruction. Um, you know, there's some, you know, and then in the future, maybe Nevermind or something. And, you know, those guys out there that, you know, want it as pure as possible and all that. Nobody's, nobody's coming to your house to take them away. And, um, you know, that's the beauty of the free market. You know, let the free market decide what people want. And I would pay for this again. You know, I actually, uh, I grabbed my, I got one ticket. Um, I went to two shows uh, in 94. I went to... It was the Division Bell Tour. Here's my T-shirt. I bought it, you know, and even at 20 years old, um, an ex-large shrank on me, so it didn't get a lot of wear. But um, I went to the the first show was at Cyclone Stadium up in Ames. And to say that I was on mind-altering substances would be an understatement. Um what happened was I woke up the next day and I said, if what I remember really happened, I need to see that again. And my older sister, well, at the time I didn't have, for some reason, I either didn't have a car or I didn't have a license. So I talked to my older sister who uh, does not like Pink Floyd or maybe never even heard Pink Floyd for that matter. I talked her into driving myself and my girlfriend up to Minneapolis to see him again. And I'm really glad I did because not only was my memory correct, it was a different show because the Cyclone Stadium show was outdoors and the show in Minneapolis was indoors. So they did things differently and they augmented the set list to cater to that. Uh, Cyclone Stadium, they, they opened with Astronomy Domine. And Minneapolis started with something different, and I don't remember. It's funny how I remember the one. Yeah, but anyway, um, they just had more. They had more visuals going on, um, as they didn't have to wait for the sun to go down for the Minneapolis show, because it was controlled lighting. So, we'll have a link in the description if you want to pick up a copy of this on Amazon. We will get a small commission for it. It will be the same price. However. Please, if you are if you live close to a record store, go buy it there. Amazon is for the people out there that are way out in the middle of nowhere and you can't get to a record store. 
But if you do decide to use our link, we will get a small commission for it and that does help the channel. So I do appreciate that. But once again, I reiterate, please support your local record stores because in this situation like this too, I bought this one from Z Records in Des Moines. Um, I wanted to do a video on it. I wanted to have the record in my hand, even though my shop sells new records. Um, I hadn't ordered this yet. Um, they will be available this week. If you are local and you want to grab one, come grab one. If not, uh, buy it from a local record store if you can. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. Um, I really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.